Institutional Policy for Online Education and Credit Transfer นะครับเสียงหายไปฮัลโหลฮัลโหลฮัลโหลคือข้างหน้านี้ไม่ได้ยินเสียงข้างหลังได้ยินใช่ไหมครับครับครับเดี๋ยวจะเป็นการบรรยายโดยท่านอาจารย์จิตชันราพันเดก่อนนะครับฉันจะมาเล่าให้เราฟังเกี่ยวกับเรื่องของเครดิตทรานสเฟอร์กับมูกที่เกิดขึ้นในประเทศอินเดียนะครับหลังจากนั้นท่านอาจารย์ดรวานซึ่งเป็นแชร์เลดี้ของมาเลเซียมูกก็จะมาเสริมข้อมูลตรงนี้ตรงนี้จะลากยาวไปจนทั้งถึงเวลา10โมงครึ่งเลยนะครับเป็นเบรกดังนั้นเพื่อไม่ให้เสียเวลานะครับ Ladies and gentlemen may I please invite Dr. t a n c h i d a p a n d e to give a presentation so please give him a warm welcome Good morning, everybody. Uh, yesterday we were talking about MOOCs online learning, and I highlighted four important steps. The first was to draft the standard syllabus. That that is first thing first. You need to have a common syllabus, a model syllabus, to facilitate the credit transfer. And then it was followed by uh, to uh, you know you need to choose a platform. Whether you 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 need your own platform or you know you can choose. The other service providers that you had already done. I mean, you have your platform. So the third important point was develop credit transfer mechanism, which I am going to discuss. What we follow in India. And the fourth point was already discussed yesterday. So I'll come to third point, that is. This is the regulation that we follow in India for you know to facilitate credit transfer, and we have a governing agency called UGC, that is University Grant Commission, which controls all the universities. So this regulation is by UGC, and it is binding to all the universities in India, whether it is a, a private sector or a public sector university. So this regulation have you know nine important. Headings. First is preamble. Why we require uh, this policy at all? Uh, I mean, to bring down the cost of education and you use the uh, ICT uh, to increase the access of education. So this first part is preamble that you can you know, see. And in the second part, they have defined the title and the application of this policy, and you can clearly see that uh, point two. Uh, 2.3 that this uh, the that these shall further apply to the transfer of credit to each student who are enrolled as a regular or a part-time student in any educational institute in India. So it is binding for all the universities. They have to follow this. Then these are the definitions. Academic Council, uh, I think you are aware that it is the apex body in the university who takes care of all the academic matters. Course is a subject. Four quadrant approach I already discussed yesterday that uh, uh, to qualify, uh, you know, uh, any course to, uh, you know, to uh, in SWAM, any course that need to be hosted, it need to follow this four quadrant approach. Four quadrants are four components actually. First component that it should have an audio or a video lecture. Second component is SLM that is study material or the you know supplementary material in the form of text. Then it should have a, a third component is a discussion forum. And fourth component is self assessment or the you know uh, grading. So to qualify to to be eligible for hosting in, into the SWAM, it any course should have these four components. So they have defined 
host institution as the institution uh, you know you know there are you know principal investigators or the subject matter experts who prepare the course so the host institution is the institution which you, the uh, principal investigator belongs and uh, they have defined certain definitions in this section this national mooc coordinator i have already discussed there eight, eight national, national coordinators, coordinators depending, depending on, on the sectors, sectors for, for uh, uh, high, high school, school we, we have, have a school education, education we have, we have a different, different uh, national, national coordinator, coordinator that, that is ncert and, and ios for, for undergraduate, undergraduate program, program we have cec which is under ugc and then, then for, for um, pg, PG courses, courses we have uh, Uh, UGC, UGC that that for professional, professional courses, courses, we have AACT, so, so we have eight sectors, sectors I mean, eight, eight national, national coordinators. coordinators. And, and then 3.9 is parent institution, parent institution is the institution where, where the, the student, student who is willing to take course on the SWIM platform, platform is, is enrolled. enrolled. Because, Because uh, uh, you know, to, to facilitate, facilitate credit, credit transfer, the, the host institution need to send, send the credit, credit details, details to the, the parent institution. institution. Host, host institution, institution is an institution, institution where, where the, the you know, where where the, the uh, subject matter experts is uh, employed. Parent institution is an institution, institution where the student who is, who is taking, taking the course is in and enrolled. So, so after once, once the, uh, the, 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 complete, the, the student complete the course, the course, this host institution send the details of the credits to the, the students, and, and in, in parallel, it sends, sends the details, details to the uh, institution where, where the st student is uh, or, uh, enrolled, enrolled, actually enrolled. And, and then we, we have, have principal investigators, he is the subject matter expert who is developing the course. And in sectors, sectors that, that I have already discussed, it is... Uh, there, there are different, different sectors, sectors that, I mean, high school, school engineering, non-engineering, diploma, diploma, degree, postgraduate, and, and based, based on these sectors, sectors that eight national, national coordinators are defined. defined. Subject, Subject means the course, and SWIM means, means the uh, platform. platform. So, so this, this section defines the definition of various terminologies, terminologies that are used. And, and this, this is how it works. works. So, so this is the, the, the section, section four defines online learning, learning courses. courses. So, so the, the first, first thing is the national coordinators advertise a uh, expression of interest, and based on that expression of interest, the uh, subject matter expert who are you know, part of various universities they send a proposal to the national coordinators, and after vetting. Uh, they uh, you know, know approve the, the course, course and, and then once, once it is approved the principal investigator is you know uh, uh, he sends in some amount so that, that he can develop the course and normally two months, months are given to the whole course so suppose uh, you know the course is normally starts two times a year once in july and second is january so They, they need to, uh, you know, announce the course, course two months in advance. advance. So how, how is it announced? See, see uh, the national coordinators already have the list of approved courses. courses. So, so, on, on the, the 1st of July, June and 1st of November, the national coordinators send a list of courses to all the vice chancellors of the university that these are the courses that we are offering for this semester so dates are fixed first is first june and second is first november for the two semesters for i mean it is uh, two months in advance normally you know semester starts in uh, 1st of august and 1st of january so it is two months in advance and then Normally, a four-credit course runs from four weeks to six weeks, and then students need to register to a particular course from the list, and then uh, he has to register and then consume the content, and he has to participate in the various activities which are already defined. 
I but mean, he need, need to participate in the discussion forums, forums and he need to submit some assignments. And uh, the principal investigator and his teams, I mean, his team is responsible for grading the assignments and the quizzes and all. And once the student successfully complete the course, uh, I mean, in the advance, the principal investigator have to decide and announce that whether he want to conduct the examination in the online mode or in the proctored mode. It depends on the subject, but the preferred media, preferred is uh, preferred medium is proctored examination. So, in the various part of country, they conduct online examination, and this is the responsibility of the principal investigator and his team to grade and uh, to check and evaluate those uh, copies. And within the four weeks of you know completion of the examination, they have to as well as the uh, institution where the parent institution where the student is enrolled. And there are situations when you know uh, a course need a practical component also, maybe a hundred marks course and uh, thirty marks are for theory and uh, maybe seventy marks for theory and thirty marks for practical, because practical cannot be you know uh, conducted in online mode. And that course is already available in his parent university. So, the uh, SWAM, I mean, the, through SWAM, we evaluate only the theory part, I mean, the 70 marks. And the rest, and we'll grade according to 70 marks, and then we'll send it to, you know, the university. And rest of the 30 marks, that is the practical component, they'll conduct at their, I mean, their premises, and they will grade, and then they'll add, and then give the mark out of 100. So this is uh, evaluation and certification that I already discussed. I mean, this is the process. This is defined in uh, fifth section, section number five. And this is sixth is the most important credit mobility of MOOCs. So, uh, the point number six, Point one says the parent institution shall give the equivalent credit weightage to the students for the credit earned through the online learning courses through SWAM platform in the credit plan of the program. And the most important is 6.2. No university shall refuse any student for credit mobility of the courses earned through SWAM. This is the most important thing because this is coming from the regulator. So no one can deny. And because university, UGC is the organization who funds the university. So it is binding. And point number seven and point number eight, I mean, they have defined them. So this is how it works. This is the structure. Um, and if you have any, and you know, uh, we also have a uh, now we have a full online degree programs we, uh, from the year 2019 itself. Government of India is planning to have a full online degree program, right? Because in Swayam, all the courses are you know offered free of cost, right? I mean this model is not sustainable, right? The aim of Swayam is to you know acclimatize the student for online learning once he is acclimatized they need to offer it uh, they need to offer full degree programs online to make it sustainable right otherwise it, it cannot sustain the government cannot uh, you know infinitely you know absorb the cost because there is a cost involved so that Students, once they are comfortable with online learning with one or two courses they have done at UG level, maybe he can go for a full degree program in the online mode. So uh, it is already in place that I am not going to discuss, but I just want to show you. This is the regulation. This is uh, online course or program regulation 2018 that is released you know, recently in July. And this is the structure. It has 12 parts and it is only, I mean, it is 
beautifully defined. Everything is defined how initially, you know, we all the universities go through an accreditation process on the scale of four. Initially, only the institutions or the universities who have a score of more than 3.25 on the scale of four are allowed to offer online programs provided they are offering that course in regular mode from last five years right so this was all about credit transfer and if you have any questions i mean i think uh, professor one will join and then she'll uh, discuss the malaysian perspective and then we can have a discussion open session Uh, just one question, please. Uh, who actually released this? Uh, Ministry of Education or? Yes, uh, Ministry of Education is the department. Uh, yes, it is, uh, you know, released through a gadget notification, which is a Government of India document. So if any institution refuses credit transfer, mm. the It's a rule. I mean, a gadget notification is a rule of the country, okay. rule of the land. No one can deny it. Okay, nobody can deny. And I mean, UGC have the power to, you know, sack the university and stop the, uh, you know, s budget. Ah. And even the affiliation. Without UGC affiliation, no university can operate in the land. Okay. So, very scary power. <laughs> and close down university. Any questions, please? No? So then may I please invite, uh, thank you so much. Please give him a big hand. Thank you, thank you Dr. Pande. May I now invite Professor Wan, who needs adapter.